When I uh, got divorced, I was living in Qatar. Um, that is definitely a strange land. It's, it's in the Persian Gulf between Saudi Arabia and Dubai, and um, the first sentence that I ever learned in Arabic when I was there was anamush arabia, which means I am not Arab. <laughs> it was really the only sentence I ever learned, and I, I never needed to use it. Um, so, it's also not really a place that you want to be living when you get a divorce. I, I didn't have to cover when I lived there, but I would not have been caught dead in this slutty getup either. <laughs> Dating was illegal. <laughs> illegal. Not just haram, like forbidden by the Quran, but illegal. Even for the expats. Um, plus, I hated my job. I, and my job hated me back. Um, I had gone over there to be the marketing director for a university, uh, but I was so kind of crushed by the whole uh, situation that I did not feel like talking to anybody. Um, and it was a really weird environment to be in. I mean, it's all sand dunes and shopping malls. I mean, it had been like a barren wasteland for most of recorded history, and then, like when they discovered natural gas, they started to build their empire. And so when I was there, it reminded me of like a moonscape if the moon came in shades of desert beige. There were cranes and scaffolding everywhere. We actually outnumbered the local people three to one. Right, weird. Um, so anyway, um, I'm plugging away at this job 10 months later after the divorce, because I had gone in to my boss and I was like, yeah, I, th I really, I think I should just go home. I don't, and she was like, oh, listen, we still need you here. And I'm gonna tell you, I was so desperate to feel needed by anybody for any reason at all. I was like, okay. But then what I realized afterward was that basically when she asked me for a flexible departure date, she just wanted to be able to fire me at will. And, right, so she, she, she um, let me go on working there, and I felt like my life was like in this conditional place, like, oh my God, if I ever get out of here, then I can really start to live. And so one night, I was surfing the interweb, and like I said, this is like 10 months after I had had multiple conversations with my boss, and I come across this yoga training thing in India, and I'm like, that will give me not only a place to go, but a deadline to leave, and I can finally get out of this godforsaken place. So I sent an email to the entire staff informing them of my new departure date. Screw you, boss lady. I got on that plane, and I was gone, and I landed in India. And it was like this explosion of people and colors and smells and sounds. And I knew right away I had made the right decision. I mean, it was nothing like that moonscape. It was a complete polar opposite place. Um, here's the thing, though. I also knew that anybody who signs up for a yoga training course really is uh, looking for sexcapades. And that's what I wanted. Because I had been waking up every day dying to have sex. There's something about living in a country where like, the women shroud their bodies and the men wear these long white dresses that gets you thinking about sex all the fucking time. <laughs> Let's review dating was illegal. I couldn't do anything about that. So I figure I'm gonna go find some really fit, really age and appropriate men to have <laughs> sex with. And when I land in India, I'm like, yes, this is so on. But then I start this yoga training thing, and like being who I am, I am, um, you know, I'm like getting up at 5.30 in the morning to go to meditation. I, I take extra Sanskrit classes. <laughs> I'm going to kirtan chanting circles. <laughs> I'm running around so much that I'm like waking up some mornings feeling like I had given birth the night before. And when I look at the people on this course, I think they actually could be my children. I don't wanna have sex with these people. I mean, I'm afraid that actually maybe uh, my marriage had kind of taken my sport fucking days out of me. <laughs> So New Year's Eve is coming. Um, this has been a two month long course. 
and um, the course is coming to an end and um, we're planning this big party. Now I should also tell you that Goa, which is where I was in India, southern India, is a huge party town. Like people, like they're smoking hash at breakfast. I don't, I don't do that or I don't even drink. So I, I mean I was really there just like kind of studying yoga and um, you know, but I don't, you know, I'm around it, I'm fine. Um, we're, and there's gonna be this big party and I know it is gonna be a huge party. Lo and behold, into town comes this guy from Britain. He's a little overweight. And uh, I see him at a party one night, and I notice that he is not, like, you know, drinking or using any drugs, which makes him really stand apart. And I, I was like, are you feeling okay? And he's like, oh, yeah, I never drink. And I was like, <laughs> so, so, like, I'm focused now. <laughs> and we get to talking, and we get to, we get to, Mashing, moshing, Simon, mashing, moshing, making out. It's, it's like when British people kiss, they call it moshing. I don't know. Anyway, so, so we're, um, uh, uh, we're adults though, so we're gonna actually wait. We're gonna wait to have sex until New Year's Eve when 2009 turns into 2010. And I, um, you know, I feel so adult about this decision. Um, and also, like, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm getting to know this guy. And, and after we're done in India, or after he's done in India, I, I might, I'm sort of open-ended. I don't really have anywhere I need to be. I'm just like, here I am. And uh, he's going to Dubai for this job. Ooh. Now, <laughs> Dubai is, is like a little bit of a step over Doha, but still barren wasteland, inhospitable climate, people in dresses. Like, I, uh, you know. But I'm thinking, well, maybe. If the pudgy Brit is going there, I can go there. Um, and so uh, the course ends, and I get a, I get a certificate, and my, my, I got a little special award, most likely to injure herself. Um, <laughs> and actually, this morning, I, I injured myself. I don't know if you can see my toe is all bruised. Um, but I uh, went to this New Year's Eve party. It was organized by this woman on the course, Anna, and her boyfriend was coming in from Australia for this big party. And uh, he was gonna bring the friends from uni, because that's how young they were, university. And, uh, and uh, uh, we go to this dinner that she's organized, and afterward we're gonna be at this party on the beach. I mean, hmm. And it's this, it's this vegan feast. <laughs> it's this long, low table, and I'm sitting at one end, and the pudgy Brits at the other end. It's fine, we're gonna keep it on the down low. So we're sending, we're sending some like racy kind of texts, and uh, he's talking to this woman down there, but I don't mind. I mean, first of all, I'm not really like the jealous type, plus I'm, I'm hotter than she is. But second, I'm at the end with Anna and Liam, and they have, those friends from uni are hot and they are young, but they're just beautiful, and they're funny, and I'm laughing, and I'm like, I'm winning. Um, <laughs> but we're still texting, you know, it's still happening. So we leave, uh, dinner's over, and we go off to this party, and it's on the beach, and it's beautiful, and everybody's on like an initial drug, whatever, MD, crystal MDMA, is that right? <laughs> whatever, everybody's happy. And, <laughs> And I'm happy too, really, you know, because it's like, what better way to bring in the new year? I know I'm getting laid, and I'm surrounded by people that I really have come to love. And so the countdown begins. Ten. And I look around, and I, I see the, the pudgy pretty still talking to that woman. Nine. He starts to make out with that woman. I feel like I felt like when I was in elementary school and I wouldn't get picked on to be in sports because I was too skinny. I'm standing there wondering, why am I so unlovable? Why does everybody leave me? Because it wasn't just like I got a divorce. When I was in Qatar, my now ex-husband got on a plane and called me from the US to tell me he wanted to get a divorce. My world had just been torn upside down. And I thought, why am I in this situation again? What's wrong with me? Seven, six, and then I realized, wait a minute, I'm on, this, I'm on this yoga course because I am trying to learn to live in the present moment. I wanna be present for myself and for other people. And right now, 
It's still a perfect moment. That didn't actually <laughs> change the beautiful night, the sound of the waves lapping on the shore, the twinkling lights. And I am surrounded by friends. Five, four. From out of nowhere, up comes Rob. It's one of Anna and Liam's friends. I think you're right, sexy. I hope you don't think I'm too forward, but I'd like to kiss you. <laughs> okay. And so then, you know, as 2009 is turning to 2010, I'm standing out on the beach and I'm kissing this beautiful guy. He played this, I, 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 uh, he had an amazing, spectacular body. I'm like, what do you do? He, he told me he played cricket. Isn't that like a paddle sport where they stand around for days and like drink tea? It, it, it didn't, did not make any sense to me, but I'm not very sporty as we've established. So, uh, you know, the kiss is over and he says, I hope you don't think this is way over the top, because apparently he's a pirate. <laughs> I'm doing my best. But I'd like to take you home. <laughs> this guy has no idea how old I am. <laughs> None. They age quick in Australia. Um, also, you know, when I was in college, me and my friend Lori, uh, had decided that there is a time at a party called the height of excitement. When you reach the height of excitement, it is only downhill from there. And so that's when you should leave the party because nothing good is gonna happen after the height of ex excitement moment has come. And so I thank him and I wish him well and I chuckle to myself and I start to make my way out of the party. And I see Anna and Liam, so I go over to thank them. <laughs> You're never gonna believe this. Your friend Rob, the hottie with the dark hair and the piercing blue eyes and an amazing body. He just, he just tried to pick me up. And Liam stops me and he goes, what? You're never gonna meet a bitter looking Australian. Go back and get him. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> I got him, put him on my scooter, because of course him taking me home was me taking him home, because <laughs> I'm the adult here. And I drive home, and we get to my apartment, and he really is beautiful, but he is also, I don't know, 21, 22? <laughs> 10 minutes later. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that was, uh, that was so much fun. Um, ooh, what are we gonna do with you now? How about we go back to the party? He's like, all right. So I put him back on the scooter, <laughs> and we go back to the party, and we're dancing, and I see Liam and Anna, and Liam is like, oh, you're back, you're a legend. <laughs> and for the first time in a really long time, I felt like a legend. Mm -hmm.